Alrighty, everyone, welcome back. So, Philadelphia Flyers. First off, I'm wearing my custom Nordic 97 jersey. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, thank you, family, for that good Christmas present. Um, the Flyers have dropped five straight games. And the narrative that I have seen through a lot of people, and even myself, I've made jokes about it, is that the Flyers are collapsing. Well, um, I'm not too sure if that's true. You may be right. You probably are right, honestly, as a Flyers fan. I wouldn't be surprised if this team collapses from the current streak that they're in. But um, there is that question of, are they really collapsing? Or is this just actually a joke? So the Flyers are currently, at the time of the All-Star break, 25-19-6 for 56 points. They are on a five-game losing streak, as is the title. Um, they are currently third in the Metro. And they have to be very thankful that the majority of the Metropolitan teams have lost. Um, the Devils have been losing games. The Penguins have been losing games. The Capitals, the Islanders especially, have been losing games. So they're still third in the Metro despite this five-game losing streak. Um, and they're lucky too because, you know, just seeing all those teams lose, it's, a, it, it's they're very lucky. Like, that's just all I'm going to say. They're very lucky with their current situation. Uh, I believe they do have a four-point lead over the Islanders. However, coming out of the All-Star break, that gap may shorten uh, because the Flyers have played a lot of hockey. Um, and there's no denying it. When you look at the overall games played, uh, plenty of teams in the Metro have more games in hand on the Flyers. And when you look at the schedule, like, the average for most teams... They would play like 12, 13, maybe sometimes 14. The Flyers played 17 games in January. 17 games. That is that is exhausting for a team. And I completely understand why they have kind of just fallen off this, 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 this cliff that they were on for a while there. After the Dallas Stars win, things were looking freaking awesome for this team. Things were looking absolutely great. However... Just after that, two back-to-backs, games games every other day, it takes a toll on you, and especially as well as that, too. You know, they're coming off of a big road trip where they traveled a lot, and there was a, there was a lot to this schedule um, in January for Philadelphia. Now, I'm not going to come on here and say that anything that happened this week was acceptable. Um, there have been plenty of times where there have been, you know, they've looked good in losses. I would say for almost all of these losses, they've looked bad in. Uh, the first one, 7-4 loss to Colorado. Uh, that was the only loss where I was like, all right, that's not too bad. Uh, they drop a lead to Colorado, a very good Avalanche team, who, in fact, uh, the Flyers stole one at home in December, or stole one in the Avalanche's building in December. So, obviously, the Avalanche were going to come in there. They were going to fight hard, and they wanted it more, and they won it more. So, definitely, um, that was a game that, like, I was thinking heading into Ottawa, yeah, We'll get momentum back with the Senators, and then we did it. We blow a two nut. We blew like a three one lead. Um, it was not a fun game at all. It wasn't. Um, we lose five two. I think it might have been five three. I believe it was five two against Ottawa. Uh, just an embarrassment, absolute embarrassment. Um, you could argue, oh yeah, back to back, but so was Ottawa. Ottawa was also on a back to back, and you know you could argue, say, oh yeah, games like this happen in eighty two game season, which they do. They, do. I'm not gonna deny that they do. But still, very embarrassing loss. And you head into the week, you're playing, you're playing a lot of Atlantic Division teams. And in fact, after the All-Star break, they play even more Atlantic teams. You need to at least get some of these points. Had the Flyers got, gotten these points and the other teams kept losing, they would have solidified their gap on, on these other teams. And it maybe even caught up to the Rangers as well. They were really close. They were really close at one point to catching up on the Rangers. And now it's just seemed like the Rangers have kind of increased their gap on them again. And Carolina, too, even though a lot of the other Metropolitan teams have lost, Carolina went on the heater this week and is now doing very well for themselves. Second in the Metropolitan now. So definitely, like, you know, these, these losses were costly. 6-3 to three to Tampa Bay. Hard-fought effort, but still not, not good enough. 3-0 uh, shout out to Detroit. I heard a lot about that one. Um, thank you. Um, and then six to two to Boston. Those are just some brutal games. And Boston, I know Boston like owns us at this point. Um, it has not been a fun time for Philadelphia and Boston. Um, but yeah, just, you need to win some of these games. And thankfully we're at the point where it's the all-star break. 
And there's obviously a lot of situations happening right now. There's injuries. There's a lot of, like, guys getting sent down. I'll get into that in a second. But just there's a lot happening right now with the Flyers. This is one of the more eventful seasons I've seen in Philadelphia the entire time I've watched this team. And, and, and it's not a lot. I'm, I will say that. It's only been, like, about almost six, seven years where I've fully paid attention to watching this Flyers team. But we've seen a lot this year. The Tippett injuries definitely affected us. Hopefully he comes back soon. That's the, that's the, that's the, not the worst thing. That's like the least, the least worst thing of all these situations. The Carter Hart things too is really, really concerning. Um, Hart, we finally find a good goalie in Carter Hart and this comes out. And now we saw Alexander Formanton, who was a guy who was um, involved with it, turn himself into the police today. I'm assuming we're going to see that happen with Carter Hart soon. I, 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 I really am assuming that. Um, just overall, the whole situation is just not fun. Um, like, like honestly, um, just, I'm very worried for Hart's return for Philadelphia. I don't think he comes back. Being honest, I don't think he comes back. Uh, Bobby Brink sent down. I've seen a lot of controversy with that. Um, I don't, I don't like it. I mean, like, I understand scratching him. It's part of his career. It's a part of, you know, him getting taken out of the lineup, other guys being put in. I understand that. Sending him down to the minors is a little weird for me. Um, because... You know, there's chemistry in that locker room. And you break up the Bobby Brink chemistry. You break up that young line of Forster, Brink, the younger players that are on this team. It's shown that it's caused, it's caused some controversy. And I think that, you know, the guys in the locker room may be talking or behind Tortorella's back, disagreeing with everything. And I think that plays a factor. So, 100%, there's going to be a lot that comes to that. Um, there's going to be a lot of things that happen there. Hopefully, Brink will come back soon. He's played well with the Phantoms. I will see him with the Phantoms. I'm going to see if he gets caught up before then. But, yeah, hopefully Brink gets on this conditioning, stand with the Phantoms, and then gets caught up on um, after the All-Star break. That's what I'm hoping. Um, and then Cutter Goche. That obviously, that obviously, that whole thing at the beginning of January was obviously a big, a big situation, too, for Philadelphia. Um, definitely... Um, that will be something that I probably go into in the offseason. I'll talk about how, you know, Gauthier and other situations that have been involved with that, with other teams too, not just Philadelphia. Um, I think that'd be a fun video to delve into. Um, but yeah, obviously the Gauthier situation was obviously a factor this year. But still, the Flyers are still saying solid. Even though this is a five-game losing streak, I still think this team can pull out of it. And that is something I don't think I would have said last year. Or, or, or even like earlier in the season. Um, I think this team can pull out of it. Um, I don't think they're collapsing. I know it's definitely a talk. Losing against a lot of these Atlantic teams is concerning, but I think a lot of these Atlantic teams, A, they probably have easier schedules, which is not to say that they didn't deserve it. I'm not saying that at all. The Flyers played like garbage in a lot of these games. And they also wanted it more. That's the biggest thing too. These Atlantic teams, they need these points. They need these points. That Atlantic division is very competitive right now. You have Detroit battling with it with Toronto. You got Tampa battling in the mix as well. You got Boston just trying to secure their number one spot. Right now, it's just so competitive in that Atlantic division. Every team wants points there. So definitely the Flyers have succumbed to that, and they probably will too against Florida, but obviously we'll find out there as well. Now, getting into the scoring, I won't go too in-depth here. I'm just going to list off the top five guys briefly. Uh, Travis connecting leading the way, as usual. 50 games played, 22 goals, 20 assists, 42 points. Um, definitely connecting, great player. Obviously, he's been great this year. Uh, Joel Farabee, 50 games played, 17 goals, 23 assists, 40 points. He's reaching new career highs this season, which is great to see. Um, I've always liked Joel Farabee. He was drafted the first year I got into hockey, so he's been one of my favorites to watch develop and grow these past couple of years. Uh, Couturier, again, his return has been great to the roster. Uh, 46 games played, 10 goals, 21 assists, 31 points. Uh, Owen Tippett, 46 games played, 18 goals, 12 assists, 30 points. Obviously, with Owen Tippett, there's a whole situation there with him being injured. Um, the hope is, is that he will come back because I feel like without him, the team is not the same. The, the, the team does not feel the same whatsoever with Tippett in the lineup, with Tippett not in the lineup. Uh, and then Atkinson, finally fifth, uh, with 46, 49 games played, 13 goals, 15 assists, 28 points. So... You know, and there's a lot of guys, too, that I'm not going to mention on here that are scoring-wise who are doing very well, like Nick Delorier, Garner Hathaway. There's other guys that have done really well for this Flyers team um, that just haven't been mentioned. There's so many notable players that you could just bring up.
definitely with Philadelphia. But you know, obviously during this five during this five game losing streak, it hasn't looked too good for the Flyers. Um, I also want to bring up Jamie Drysdale. Drysdale, my first time talking about him in a Flyers related video. Uh, eight points in 18 games played with the Flyers and the Ducks. Uh, definitely Drysdale's looked really good in Philly. I've liked him a lot. Um, haven't lo haven't watched a whole lot of Flyers hockey. Uh, recently, but still, um, Drysdale still looking very solid, just doing what he can for us, and I appreciate that. I, th I think that I think that he definitely didn't want to leave Anaheim. I think you could tell in his in his like his welcoming to the media there and all that. I, you could tell he didn't want to leave Anaheim. He was really bummed out. But the Flyers really making him feel loved. I I watched that first game against Montreal. That ovation they gave for him when he got the assist, unbelievable. Just, like, the, the amount of love around that kid is insane. And I think that definitely it shows that, you know, you want to play in Philadelphia, we're going to love you. If you don't want to play, then we're going to hate you. So, you know, Philadelphia's not for everyone. I don't blame Goche for leaving. But, obviously, you know, that plays a factor there, too. And then, of course, there's Samuel Urson. Um, Urson, as Danny Breer said, he mentioned to the media that he does want to keep Urson. He believes Urson can be this next starting goaltender for us, which... I'm like, eh, sure, but like, I'm not really on board with it yet. Uh, Urson, 25 games played, 12, 9, and 3, with a 2.60 goals against average and a .898 save percentage. Obviously, I, w I won't deny it. Um, Urson's been great, um, but I'm not 100% on board with making him the starting goaltender. I'm a little bit worried it's going to bite us in the ass, um, which, you know, I hope it doesn't. I love Urson, but, you know, obviously that's something I want to keep in mind. And then, of course, the trade deadline. If the Flyers keep falling off the way they are, and th this is worst-case scenario, if the Flyers keep falling off the way they are and come trade deadline, they're out of a playoff spot, I would ex I would expect Briere to sell. I think Sean Walker's the one to go. I think Rista Linen will be looked at, believe it or not. Um, I think that, you know, guys like Hathaway, you know, there there's going to be guys that the Flyers can move. 100%. I think Sean Walker's our biggest guy, though. Um, that probably will get traded, even though he said he's loved Philadelphia, he's loved the city, and I'm, I don't I don't disagree with him. Um, but definitely, if the right offer comes along, you should do it. But obviously, the Flyers in this five-game losing streak, they got Florida up next, they got Winnipeg up next. They have a few pretty solid teams. The schedule doesn't get that much get that much easier from here. Um, even though they're not even the hardest one in the NHL, they still have a pretty difficult one coming up. So definitely hoping for the Flyers to turn this around. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, uh, make sure to leave a like. Hit that subscribe button down below. I greatly appreciate it. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.